of Netflix, where your fearless co-hosts Isaac and Larry force each other to watch the worst pieces of shit on Netflix. We will go over every bad edit, all the broken dialogue, all the wooden acting, and laugh along the way, because this is the Bowels of Netflix! Welcome to the Bells of Netflix. I'm Isaac, and with me as always is my fearless co-host, Larry. How are you doing this week, Larry? Uh, remember when I said I'd think of something to start you, the you, show you with? Did, you, 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 didn't, you didn't? No, but believe it or not, between the 30 seconds where I made that declaration and now, I have not thought of anything clever. Oh, well. Hmm. <laughs> Fuck. I know that the, the success or failure of the show hinges on the opening bit that I decided to come up with. Uh, we lost the at all of Kansas. The 50 oh, million God. listeners we had, they're Damn all gone. <laughs> they don't put up with no bullshit in Kansas. We keep they're, losing. They're real. We keep losing listeners. Yeah. It's, when, uh, it's uh, when, when is this episode going to come out? Uh, the first week of November. Yeah. Oh, is it the first week? In, okay. Because it, it's Halloween today because we record like a pair of morons. <laughs> and yeah, did, there's probably going to be a lot of doorbells as children come looking for candy. And I, I'm like... I did, was going to ask you that. Do you live in a trick or treat zone? Do you live in a zone there, with children? There's trick or treaters around, but our house, uh, like our recycling bin, is still out on the curb from two days ago because we never brought it in because we're terrible people. Uh, general, like the house is in disarray. There's a tattered American flag. Our screen door is broken. There's a propane tank sitting out front. Do you have so to inform like- trick or treaters that you're a sex offender? <laughs> Legally? Probably. In actuality, I haven't been. <laughs> I, I live in an apartment complex, and somehow in four years, I've never had a single trick-or-treater. You'd think there'd be at least one lazy parent who's just like, we'll just take them around the block. But yeah, It's a little weird. Yeah, it's great. Is, I are hate you children in a and the human race. Sex apartment complex? Uh, not that I know of. But honestly, mm. if you told me, if someone was like, oh, hey, that's where all the sex offenders live, I wouldn't be that surprised. But being one yourself, yes, obviously. Well, I mean, they wanted me to report to a camp, but I said that sounds a little Nazi-ish. <laughs> this is a weird uh, opening. This, Why do we sabotage the, ourselves? The Sex Offender Podcast. What? So we are the Bowels of Netflix. <laughs> We're two old friends who hate each other dearly, and every week one of us forces the other one to watch the worst movie they can yeah. find on If Netflix. calling each other sex offenders didn't clue you in that we hate each other. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, it's a lot of pent-up rage Yeah, uh, from 56 movies now that we've had to watch. Jesus. Yeah. It's a lot of movies. It's a lot of time that we've put into this. It's a lot of time. Thank God we get paid in turkey slices. Um, so there's there's that. Uh, but yeah, you should email us at bowelsandnetflix at gmail.com. Let us know if you've seen any of these movies, what you think of the show. If you have any movies we should check out, we would love to hear from you. Rate and um, subscribe. Yes. Do the rate and subscribe on whatever platform you're devouring this from and uh you can find us on twitter find us on facebook we're the only bowels of netflix around so mm-hmm. just go ahead and put that in your search bar and give us a twiddle or a twaddle or a fiddle or a diddle or however it works on social media we have a huge tiktok page it's mostly genital videos but it's very popular not like Again, sexy Kansas genital videos like it's all like on board. it's like really medical dry genital yeah videos. like all the ingrown hairs of my taint oh god <laughs> Sounds like a punk band. Are you serious? That's the title of my uh, the what memoir. <laughs> <laughs> the the ingrown hairs of my taint. The my story of discomfort on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I mean, that's that's a really good title. <laughs> it's yeah. It's it's not bad. So speaking of discomfort, uh, I had to watch the last Airbender, <laughs> which is a M Night Shyamalama Ding Dong vehicle. Oh, God. Which is universally decried as a terrible movie. So, uh, for good reasons, we'll get into all of that. Uh, It's based on a Nickelodeon TV show, uh, anime series that aired in 2004, I think it first came out, and there were three seasons. Mm -hmm. And I did not watch it, or I just started watching it in in anticipation of watching this movie. And I love the show. The show is amazing. I'm into season three now. It's definitely one of the better animated series I've ever seen. I really Possibly like the best animated series. I really I've liked it. Um, well, I mean, the BoJack Horseman exists. Um, oh yeah, yeah. 
They're they're different categories for me. Yeah, I, this is for children. That yes, and that that's a little bit why it's. I really enjoyed um, the last day because I watched it this year, a couple months ago now. I really enjoyed the show. Uh, I don't love young adult media, and that's this is what it's aimed towards. So it's a little bit, you know, it's a little kiddy at times, and for me that gets old yeah. fast, which is my only complaint about. It. Otherwise, it is a ten out of ten show. It's it's excellent. Yeah, and that's that, just that's a personal complaint on my much. my and that's that's a big reason why the movie fails is all of that like whimsy and kid charm is sucked dry. Oh god, yeah, you cannot Completely translate gone. this show to live action. I think it's You a, could do a better job. You could probably. make any of the characters say one funny thing in the movie and it would be better than what we have. <laughs> <laughs> because there is zero humor. Yeah, it's ostensibly a comedy adventure show. Yeah, and like it, at moments it gets serious, and there's you know the talk of life and death, and finding your place in the world, yeah. and there's a war going on. So it's it's you know it's got it's high stakes, but essentially it's a funny kid show. Yes, really, and it is funny. Yeah. A lot of the humor, you know, there's like oppa farts and stuff like that, and just, yeah, you know, silly jokes. Right, but um. There's plenty of humor. Some of it, you know, isn't you know the greatest. Some of it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the the show is amazing. Yes, w one of the yeah, eight out of ten, nine out of ten, just like fires on all cylinders. It, it, almost no complaints. It's one of those things that's like universally loved. Like I've never met a person who was like, "Oh, Last Airbender" or or Avatar. The Last Airbender is the name of the show. Yeah, and I've never heard someone like, "Oh, that piece of shit." Like everybody yeah, likes got, it. it it's got something for everyone, and it, and it goes, it slides back and forth very nicely between action and drama and comedy and yes. character study and stuff like that. Yes. Um, so, yeah, but the movie doesn't. <laughs> Let's get into that. Shocker. That's why we're here. <laughs> so, this came out in 2010, so not too long. I guess the show ended in probably 06 or 07. Sounds about right. So, this is uh, pretty on the heels of the sh uh, success of the show. Um it was directed by a Mr. M. Night Shyamalan, <laughs> the fairly famous director, one of the more, one of the bigger names as a director in our time. Yeah. Uh, got his, notably his biggest, you know, what launched him into his success was The Sixth Sense, mm -hmm. um, which is a very good movie. I uh, and... disagree, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It, it it has its problems in certain ways. In that it makes it's, no it's sense for a you, reason. It, once, once the twist is revealed, the movie actually makes no sense whatsoever. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but if you don't think about that, oh, if you don't, then if you fine. don't think about, yeah, yeah, that's right. If you don't think yeah. about it at all, you don't realize <laughs> yeah. it doesn't make any fucking sense. So yeah, the. Sixth Sense was unbelievably successful. It, that it, had it was, a yeah. bunch of Oscar nominations. It's got, like, um, I see dead people, like, cultural iconic moment of the movie. Right. Uh, famous twist ending and all of that. So, huge movie. And uh, Shyamalan did Unbreakable. He did Signs. Those were both big, successful, popular. Not as popular, not as well-received, but generally well-received. Signs and, is a pile of shit. I don't know Unbreakable at all. That also has Bruce Willis. That's supposed to be pretty good. Mm. I don't not think I've even Sixth heard Sense. of that good it came out right after six cents hmm. like in 2000 weird it was six cents sign or unbreakable then signs signs was good and was or was fine until the aliens don't like water and that's what kills them and it's stupid if you if you've ever seen a picture of earth from fucking space it's mostly water <laughs> it's called the blue marble for a reason <laughs> fuck's sake so and yeah and then shawan's career kind of went to shit uh, and Airbender was more or less the height of him in the shit. Mm. Uh, when people were like, this fucking clown. He did like the, um, what, Lady in the Water, The Happening, the fucking Mark Wahlberg plants are trying to was, kill did, people. Did he do The Village? Yeah. Yeah. The Village was where it started going downhill. Um, I believe, did he do Devil as well? Was that him? I don't know. Which is about he's, people he's actually, stuck in an elevator, which has, it, it's awful. It's so bad. I don't, I don't think that's him. He's he's actually having a bit of a resurgence now. He had um, a couple of movies come out that were, I forget what they're called, because I'm terrible at research. Um, but generally, he's a, a bit on a bit of an upswing mm. right now in his career. Um, but yeah, so Last Airbender was kind of the height of him, like people just done with him. And like, he... <laughs> fucking clown you suck 
is also the first big budget movie he ever did because uh, a lot of times he was in complete control or like funded his own movies or like you know uh, and most of his films he um is in control of the story wrote the story from the ground up wrote the script i think he wrote the script for this i don't know for sure but obviously the story wasn't his story he's telling someone else's story yeah he's adapting here. the first season of the show essentially yeah uh, and that's not where he does well. He does well in small, low-budget movies that is his concept beginning to end. Uh, so, yeah, if you he's a fish so, out of water yes. here. <laughs> that's he, that's where his movies aren't awful. He does better. <laughs> I'll give you better. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to say So well. the budget budget for this was $150 million, mm-hmm. Um And for comparison, I think the budget for Sixth Sense was $40 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, so definitely a lot bigger. Um, yeah, this did make its money back. Worldwide gross is almost three hundred and twenty million. Well, it's such a uh, low so property a that I'm not surprised. It, you yeah, know, even people people yeah. were gonna go see it, right? I, I don't think a lot of people went to see it twice in theaters. No, I'm gonna guess <laughs> not. <laughs> so its runtime is 103 minutes, so a little over an hour and a half. IMDb, it's got a 4.0, so kind of. A, Par for the course for us, we, our movies like average out pretty close to a four, mm-hmm. and there's enough people who like just you know it's an action, it's a kids action movie. There, there's fire, there's effects, right? There's drama, kind of. <laughs> They're just gonna be okay with it, <laughs> so I'm not too surprised. Uh, the Rotten Tomato critic score is five percent, <laughs> which is very low. <laughs> That's very the, very low t- in comparison. <laughs> same as Delta Farce. Yeah, so that's pretty bad. Uh, and Rotten Tomato audience is thirty percent, which uh, you know tends to d- be a little lower mm-hmm. um, than a lot of stuff we've seen. Uh, my personal score is two out of ten. My, my wife absolutely hates this movie. We watched it together the first time, and she thinks it might be the worst movie she's ever seen. I I will not go that far. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's uh, having talked to her about Airbender a little bit. I think she's a little more jaded because she loves the show so much. I, yeah, I love the show, too. I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen it to conclusion. She has. Right. She's watching it a second time with me now. Well, so she saw it when she was younger, and you're seeing No, it... no, she just saw it this summer, too. Oh, really? She didn't watch it as a kid, no. Oh, she didn't watch it as a kid. Oh, okay. Never mind, then. Nope. Um, But, yeah, so, but it's, like, it could be worse. Mm. <laughs> it could be worse. <laughs> not by much. But, yeah, two out of ten. Yeah. So, I'm going to try not to make this the... M. Night Shyamalan review, but it's going to be hard. <laughs> and I have to cover this quote I got from a Rolling Stone article about him from years ago. Um, God, Jesus. So he's kind of a pretentious twat. You don't say. Uh, or at least he he was. He's he's mellowed out. I read some interviews from like the last couple of years with him where he has, and he's 50 years old now. So he's, you know, he's getting, getting a little wizened in, in his uh, ripe age. And he's has had some interesting things to say about success and failure and how failure is kind of cleansing, whereas success is confusing. Okay. Because you're not sure how responsible you are for the success. Okay, that's... Like, are you, are you really a genius because The Sixth Sense was as popular as it was? Definitely not, but I mean, that's a bad example. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I get what he's going for, yeah. Yeah, so his perspective has definitely gotten a little more interesting, although he does have a reputation for being pretentious, and this is the height of that. (laughs) So I'm going to read you this quote from Rolling Stone. In 1988, before he was accepted at NYU, he purchased a full page in his high school yearbook and turned it into a mock-up cover of Time magazine, featuring himself (laughs) sitting on a bar stool and snapping the suspenders of his tuxedo <laughs> with the screaming headline, NYU grad takes Hollywood by storm. Jesus Christ. Which is the cringiest fucking thing I've ever heard. What an asshole. And did you find that picture? I did not find the picture, oh, unfortunately. Man. I tried to. But the infuriating thing is he wasn't wrong. <laughs> he kind of, he did graduate from NYU and he kind of took Hollywood by storm. But still, that's an <laughs> asshole thing to do. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and yeah, it's him being a 17-year-old fucking brat with the oh ego complex God. and like I've been there to a certain extent. Mm. So, I I get Oh, it, I've always like, hated myself God. and assumed I would fail. So, you both you and M Knight got me there. 
<laughs> also, let the, I, I always, always had the failure complex. How yeah. much uh, M Night research did you do? Because can we talk about his fucking name? What is that name? M No Shyamalan. I mean, it's a funny to say, but it's it's his last name. So whatever. Unless that's a stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what the fuck is no. M Night? His first name is M something, whatever Indian name. I, I forget what it is. Okay. Uh, he chose Knight All right. as his middle name. Good. That's what I he thought. he chose to stylize it M. All right. Yeah. That's, it's, that's what I thought. Shyamalan's his real last name, and, and M yeah. is his first initial, I mean, but M. Night Shyamalan is a crafted stage. It's name. fun to say Shyamalan a ding dong, but it's his last name. So yeah. you know, my last name is Beard, and it's dumb. And, and I mean, as we heard last week, I hate the name Larry, and I'm not going to get into it. But M. Night always bothered me. Like, go fuck You're, yourself, you twit. Your pretentious counterpart should be Lawrence Mustache. Oh, yeah. No one's ever made that joke before in the entire history oh, really? of my life. No one's oh. ever made that one. <laughs> Never heard of you should call yourself Larry Mustache since, I don't know, kindergarten. Congratulations. You're pushing 40 and you've finally made that joke. I am pushing 40. Idiot. So <laughs> I'll give a quick uh, <laughs> quote from Roger Ebert from his review. He did not like this movie. You, again, you don't say. And a lot say. of times he, he can be forgiving for movies that aren't great movies, but like they know what they're doing. Or like a kid's movie that's not great, but it, you know. It's right. It's not meant to be. Accomplishing what it wants to accomplish. Right. He really hated this. <laughs> the Last Airbender is an agonizing experience in every category I can think of and others still waiting to be invented. <laughs> The laws of chance suggest that something should have gone right. Not here. It puts a nail in the coffin of low-rent 3D, but it will need a lot more coffins than that. (laughs) That is brutal. Ebert throwing shade from the grave. Good God. So there's, and especially like beloved fans of the TV series have a lot of specific complaints about the show. One I will touch on but don't want to get too far into is the race of the characters. Mm -hmm. Um, Because uh, basically everyone in the show is like generic Asian. It's kind of set in like an Asian world, not a specific country. It's in a different world. Not many white people in the show that I can remember. The three main characters, Ong. uh, Sokka and Katara. Yeah, Sokka and Katara. Um, sorry, Ong. I said Ong. That's another thing. Ang, it's Ang. It's whatever. not Ang. Yeah, he, no. It's, oh, it's that's Ang. right. The movie says Ong, right? When it's Ang. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Ang. <laughs> it's fucking Ang. We'll get into that too. <laughs> but yeah, they're all white actors, and all the Fire Nation are Indian actors, and it's wait, Ang. I don't know. Ang's like, a white actor. Kind of. Okay. He might have a little Asian in it. Interesting. I didn't I, think... I didn't look. I just remember. And now I've now I watched my like three minutes of it a couple weeks ago now. So I don't quite remember. I thought they the, at least the one article, made him an Asian boy. The one article I read said um, that the three main characters were white. So okay. I don't know if I should trust. Sokka and anyway. Guitar are definitely white. And in the show, they are, cer- are they are certainly not white. Yeah. They're basically supposed to be in. Yes. And they're not uh, in the movie. So. And yeah, pronunciation. So pretentious fucking Shamalama Ding Dong <laughs> decides, well, I want to honor Japanese culture and I respect Japanese culture. So I'm going to pronounce the names like they'd be pronounced if they were pronounced in Japanese, right. which the show isn't Japanese. Yes. It was made in America. It's not based off a manga or something that came out of Japan. It, it's, it's, it's not set yeah. in Japan. It's like generic Asian country. Mm-hmm. So there's no loyalty to the japanese culture at all no, it's like one of the only anime that like popularized anime that isn't have doesn't have any real japanese roots there's so, no reason yeah, there's to change n- the names because they were made this absolutely way in not English. if this was a japanese show even then no just why would you change the pronunciation so <laughs> ang becomes ong Sokka becomes soka <laughs> come on and <laughs> iroh becomes i think iro or whatever uh, 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 Jesus Christ. It's infuriating. All right, so let's get into the plot. Jesus Christ. We get an opening exchange between brother and sister Sokka and Katara. Katara is a waterbender, and she's practicing moving a ball of water through the air and accidentally drops it on Sokka, although this happens off camera for some reason. What? I don't know why we don't just see the water land on him. CGI budget why ran not? out. I guess. Sokka, who doesn't look wet, He's got, like, a bead of water on his nose, but, like, his parka is bone dry. 
Jeez. stalks over to Katara, and it's really awkward because it looks like he's about to beat the ever loving shit out of her. It looks like we're about to have a domestic. <laughs> have a domestic. <laughs> and then, okay, Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> then they have oh they're especially Sokka and Katara I think are some of the worst actors in this <sighs> and their exchanges together are so stilted and awkward and just like acting 101 at your local community college that's my only with, note like, from the bit I saw was how <sighs> bad of an actor Sokka was and how yeah. stilted his interaction with Katara was. Because I, I saw, it, like, maybe three unbelievable. minutes. Unbelievable. It was terrible. It, yeah. So, so cringy. I, so, throughout the movie, we get a lot of voiceover exposition from Katara. And a lot of it is stuff that could very easily... Like, I know we're we're doing season one of the show, which is, like, six-plus hours of content into a movie that's less than two hours long. So, you're going to kind of have to pack some things in. Yeah. But a lot of her voiceover is not, like, condensing things. It's just stuff that they could easily do in dialogue or that the show does in dialogue just as quickly. It's just, I, I don't get it. I don't know if they thought a voiceover was a good choice. Voiceovers, voiceovers are almost never a good choice. Shawshank Redemption yeah. being a, an anomaly with that. Right. Yeah, for the most part, it's not voiceovers are a bad call. Yeah, it's because as we've said before, the generally show don't tell is the way to go. Yeah, and that just gives you that paves a road for you to tell and not show anything. Well, we'll get into some more of the voiceover stuff later because it makes every mistake it can make. It's so bizarre. So Sokka and Katara are out hunting, and they find a giant <laughs> ice sphere. Uh, Katara whacks it with Sokka's boomerang sword thing, and it explodes, shooting a giant bolt of light into the sky. Inside the sphere is a little bald boy with an arrow tattooed on his head and a giant fluffy flying bison. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, for for those of us, it it's this is a little weird because we've both seen the show and relatively recently, so it's like pretty fresh. Because for me, I forget things pretty quickly. Yeah. But this is an odd concept, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I'm definitely going to kind of gloss over some of the plot stuff. Just sure. Because how it, it trying to condense an entire season of television into one movie is a terrible idea. Yeah. First of all. And and that's that's not the uh, the plot isn't really the problem because it follows the main beats of the story. And the mm -hmm. general plot is pretty good of, mm -hmm. you know, of the show itself. It's not handled particularly right. well in this movie. But my, my yeah. the plot points aren't really my issue. It's how it's handled and everything else. <laughs> right. So we see a menacing Fire Nation ship um, that has noticed the bolt of lightning. So just real quick background, too, if you don't know anything about Last Airbender, there's four elements and four different types of benders that control the elements. Air, earth, water, fire. And each of them has a different nation associated with it. Um so in a whole separate culture, and they they can do the fire bending and everything. And Ang, Ang, Jesus Christ, fucking Shyamalan ruined me. <laughs> Ang, <laughs> Ang is the last Airbender because all the Airbenders got genocided by the fire people, and he's the Avatar, the person who gets reborn. Essentially, the Dalai Lama. It's really mm -hmm. like it's very akin to that. Even the way he's selected by picking out certain toys from his past, that's right. straight out of the Dalai Lama shtick. But he's the only one who can control. All four elements, and he's supposed to save the world and all that shit. So, yeah, that's the overall stuff. So, the menacing Fire Nation ship notices the Bolt of Light and heads toward the village where Sokka and Katara live. Prince Zuko is in command of the ship. And I gotta pause real quick. Uh, <laughs> Prince Zuko is played by Dev Patel, who is a good actor who was in Slumdog oh, Millionaire. Oh, I know that name. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Um, and he does the best he can. He's one of the few people who really can act, but... The material is just so bad, he can only do so much with it. Sure. One of the things I found most infuriating, just on a personal level, was, like, you've, you've seen the show. What's Prince Zuko's defining characteristic? He's got a big, like, fist size scar over his left eye. I think his left eye. His left eye, I think, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's big it's and like dark giant. red. Takes He's up, very, like, a third of his yeah. face. He's very pale, and this scar is like a big, angry red fist mark over his eye yeah. and, like, takes up his whole face. So, and there's always going to be some, and like, obviously it's a cartoon, so it's done up. 
uh, stylistically yeah, right. because of that. And this is live action, so you're always going to lose some of that in trying to make it kind of real. Definitely. The There's some things don't translate. on Zuko is so subdued, a lot of times <laughs> you don't even notice it, especially because the movie is just shot so fucking dark. But you <laughs> but almost can't just... tell it's there. It's not a that's... different color. What? <laughs> it looks like a real burn mark. Where it's just kind of warped, messed up skin. Like sizzly flesh, yeah. Yeah, but like... But that's like his whole defining feature. Yes. Is, and it's like drives his whole character and every decision he makes. Yep. Yep. Well, that's a terrible choice. It really just, is. Why don't you just throw some rouge on that bad boy exactly. and fucking darken what, it like, up? There is a mid place between, oh, well, if he actually was burned and healed years later, this is what it would look like. And this is what the cartoon looks like. There's it's a middle a ground to walk. There's a middle ground there. God damn it. Fuck. That's a very annoying. <laughs> yes. <sighs> okay, so Prince Zuko is in command of the ship, and he has his troops come down and wrangle all the old people out of the village. But it turns out that Aang was who he was looking for. And Aang is a 12-year-old boy, 10 or 12-year-old, whatever. Aang agrees to come peacefully if Zuko leaves the village alone, and they make that deal. Then we cut into one of the igloos or whatever, and Grandma is telling Sokka and Katara that Aang is probably the airbender, and they should probably go rescue him. Very exciting. On the Fire Nation ship, Zuko and his uncle Iroh, or Iro, if you want to be a jackass about it, like Shamalama Ding Dong, <laughs> perform a test and determine that Aang is, in fact, the Avatar. Hey, Isaac? Oh, please. No. No. <laughs> I will not honor the Japanese. I, Pearl Harbor still hurts. <laughs> Remember the Alamo. Yeah. That was the Japanese, right? Yeah. <laughs> With the bandoliers and sombreros. Yeah. So Zuko pops a bone over having the Avatar as his prisoner, but Aang nopes the fuck out of there with some wind action. He escapes on his glider and hooks up with Sokka and Katara, who are flying on Appa the giant bison. Yeah, the giant bison can f just fly, and it's just a thing. Yeah. Which in the show, it's great. And also in the show, Appa is a character. He doesn't talk, yeah. uh, he, but he makes grunts and has a personality and is involved with things. No, yeah. in the, he's a car. He's their car <laughs> in the movie. He's like, oh, great. let's get in the car and go. <laughs> There's great. no personality at all. It's, you've completely ruined that character. Almost the same uh, thing with Momo later on, too. It's like, now no. we're just throwing him in because we have to. But he doesn't yeah, I mean, do anything. I'm, I'm fine with Momo not being a character. Oh, I like Momo. Fuck you. Of course. Uh. Everyone, everyone sucks but me. Right. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> so they start heading to Aang's home. But he finds out that all his air monk buddies have been genocided by the Fire Nation. And he was actually trapped in the ice for 100 years. And everyone he knows is dead. So he oh, gets man, all pissy. Just like Donald Trump. <laughs> That's his origin story, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, he's going to be president for four more years and no, three days, I, isn't he? I think we might be okay, Larry. I think we might be yeah. okay. I'm trying to be optimistic. Yeah, sure. I, Let me know how that goes for I you. have a noose hanging from the rafters in the garage if it need be, but Great. I'm trying to be optimistic. So, yeah. Uh, oh, speaking of that, quick, before we go, I I'll leave politics out of it, but uh, shout out to the fucking Pennsylvania government, which promised me they were going to send me my ballot and never did. So thanks for God that. damn it. Oh yeah, your vote's important. Find out, make make sure to vote. Pennsylvania yeah, I'm might have decide to go the election. spend a fucking day in line with a bunch of people and probably die. So this is the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Do your duty as an American, Larry. Elect Donald uh, Trump. God. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Is uh, Nader still running? Can I vote Nader? Yeah, just write, just fucking put your finger in your ass and write Nader and shit across the whole ballot. <laughs> <laughs> it's about what it's worth. Yeah. Oh, our country's dying. Yeah. So Aang gets all pissy that everyone he's ever known is dead, and he goes into the Avastar. Uh, Avatar all pissy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great description. <laughs> uh, all, all his shit starts glowing, like his little arrow in his eyes, and he starts floating, and wind is going everywhere, and Sokka and Katara are like, what the fuck is happening? Uh, and turns out Aang is in the spiritual plane, where he meets a spooky dragon in a cave, and the dragon's all like, shit, Avatar, where the fuck you been? And that then that pretty much ends. He comes back to the earthly plane, and that's it. When you put it like that, he does sound like Mushu the Dragon, played by Eddie Murphy from Mulan, which would be uh, yeah. a crossover that I really want to see. <laughs> that could work. I could see that. <laughs> uh, we find out that Zuko's dad thinks Zuko is a punch-ass punch, punk bitch and has placed him in exile. 
The only way for Zuko to get his honor back is to capture the Avatar. <sighs> Meanwhile, our heroic trio gets captured by some random Fire Nation goons, and they're placed in an Earthbender prison. Now, you've seen the show and not the movie. Can you describe the Earthbender prison? Yeah, it's like all made of metal because Earthbenders can't bend metal. Right. It's been, can... it's been it's been it's been a couple months, so I'm not. I, I think that's what it was. That's essentially it's like it, built... and it's it's out like it's a, basically an oil rig in the middle yeah. of the ocean. So there's no Earth anywhere nearby. Yeah. So then, yeah, the the bending is if you ha if you're a water bender, you can bend whatever water's near you. If you're an earth bender, blah blah blah. That's right. Yeah. So it's a, it's like a literally a metal platform in the middle of the ocean where they're basically just people. Yeah. And in the show, the the cool thing that and like Kasaka actually affects the plot sometimes in the show. Yeah, um, he's a valuable he character. Discovers that they're burning coal. Which coal uh -huh. is a type of earth, and then Aang like winds it up and gives it to the Earthbenders, and they can fight back and finally defeat the Fire Nation people and win their freedom. So, in the movie, uh, the Earth Prison is just on the ground. Now, now, hold on a second. <laughs> There's an inherent problem with that. There is. The Earth people could use the Earth they were standing on to free themselves from prison. Yes, they could, but they they don't. Okay. They need Aang to come along and give a poorly acted motivational speech. <laughs> and okay. Then, and then they're like, oh, okay, I guess let's get ourselves free. Yeah, you know what? Sure. All right. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> pretty pretty rough. Fuck. Pretty goddamn rough. So, Jesus. Uh, Aang reveals to the Earthbenders and the Firebender prison guards that he's the Avatar and does his whole speech. And Earthbenders fight back, and then we get a fighting montage where they f uh, free several different villages um, and prisoners from stuff. They're kind of going around the countryside freeing the small earthbending villages. So this is the first time we're really seeing a lot of the bending, because there's fight sequences with earthbenders, Katara's waterbending, the firebending, uh, Aang's airbending. And the special effects, like, look okay, kind of? But all the bending comes across as underwhelming. A lot of it's really slow, and it's just not enough. And I know it's the kind of thing that's hard to translate, even with really good CGI. And the CGI is not bad. It's ten years old, so it's maybe a little dated. Right. But it doesn't it doesn't look poorly done. It's just not as exciting as it should be. Uh -huh. And it's a lot slower than it should be most of the time. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, that just seems like a thing. It's another reason, like, maybe don't do a live action fucking version of this thing, you yeah, idiots. Yeah. Because it's not gonna translate well. No, it doesn't. So our, our trio has a conversation about how Aang has to learn to bend the rest of the elements to fulfill, fulfill his destiny as the Avatar. Um, and they start planning on how to find him different teachers of the different elements. Mm -hmm. So now we'll get into my biggest gripe about the cinematography. Uh, and I still, like, even if he had a bad cinematographer, I, I fucking blame it on Shyamalan. He fucking god asshole. So, so many of the conversations, <laughs> this one in particular, are shot so close on the actors' faces that you can't see their foreheads, you can't see oh. their chins. It's oh, like you Lord. can see their mouths moving and their eyes, and that fills the entire frame. That's the worst. It's Why would you do that? It's very awkward, um, and so much of the background gets obscured. Like, there's hardly any background going on. But also, but they have things happening in the background. Like, during this conversation, you can see, like, the earthbenders just kind of milling around and going about their daily lives. Which, to, like, what? quickly and economically establish the world building of it, why would you not have a wider shot where you can actually see that stuff instead of just, like, a couple earthbenders, like, walking in and out of frame, out of focus? Like, why would right. you Why not... would you need that much of a close-up unless you're, like, they're squaring off for a fucking duel or something? Right, and like, it's not a dramatic of moment of, like... No, they're talking about like, I, nonsense. The, the moment where Aang finds out that everyone he knows is dead. Yeah, sure, a close-up on his face is fine. That's great. Yeah, he has anguish. Fine. But this is a conversation about, hey, I probably need to learn the other elements and <laughs> how, how, what are we going to do? Like, what, let's get a plan cooking. It's awful. Oh, Lord. It's so bad. So... Uh, uh, where are we at here? Okay. Our, and yeah, it's even more frustrating because some of the set design and world building actually looks pretty decent. Uh-huh. Um, but they just don't spend enough time showing it or they waste these close-ups. And you can't see That's, what's going on a, in the background. It's a strange choice. 
Yeah. I don't understand I don't, that. I don't. <laughs> so our trio arrives at the Northern Water City. It's ruled by a hot blonde princess that Sokka gets an immediate chub for. There's yet even more voiceover from Katara that's completely unnecessary. Like, she says, We arrived at the Northern Water City and they greeted us as, you know, the special guests. As you see them arrive at the Water City and watch them be greeted. There does not need <laughs> Why to bother? be a voiceover. <laughs> Why so, bother like, then? Like you had mentioned, the rule is show, don't tell. And fucking Ding Dong is showing and telling. <laughs> He's doing both. <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, Jesus Christ. So, uh, I don't want to body shame people. Or not body shame, <laughs> face shame. But, okay. But. So, <laughs> what, what do you remember about Lord Ozai of the Fire Nation in the first season of the show? They don't show his face. Yes. Oh, yep. they show in the second season either. Because he's supposed to be, he's like the overarching villain. Like, he he's the one, because this whole world is embroiled in a war, and he's the one who's, like, the impetus for all of it. So, like, even though, because, you know, the primary, one of the primary antagonists, like, for the show is Prince Zuko, because he's chasing them around. But the his dad is, like, the overarching villain of the entire series. Yeah. So they he's, don't he's... show him at all. Right, it's supposed to be menacing and secretive, and he's he's the big bad behind the shadows. Yeah, you'll Wizard like Oz, see him whatever. from behind, or you'll like see him on, in the shadows on his throne, and you know he'll like just be have a big, loud, powerful voice, and it's supposed to be menacing. Yeah, uh, in the movie, <laughs> Lord Ozai of the Fire Nation is played by some dumpy fuck with a nose the size of a Volkswagen and eyes that are bizarrely close together, and I can't stop looking at him. <laughs> Jesus. And wondering what happened at the moment of conception, <laughs> like if his parents fell off a bed <laughs> while his dad was coming in his mom's fucking oh. rancid pussy. Anyway. Jesus Christ, <laughs> rancid pussy! Come on. I, well, something the, the the petri dish was off for this man. Oh Lord, I have to look him up now because <laughs> that's that description is I'm too much for me. I'm exaggerating to to a degree. Uh, but he does not look menacing at all. Oh, what the... F oh, God. <laughs> like, he just looks like a guy. No, yeah, he's just a dude. Just, yeah, he's just dumpy, weird, regular dude. He's there's no intimidation factor <laughs> at all. No, he's just a guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he looks he's... like the, the guy who would be easily defeat. Like, Batman is going to beat him up on his way to a real villain. Yeah, I... He is also, his acting is not remotely threatening. His voice mm -hmm. is kind of deep, but doesn't have the menace. And I think, um, I believe in the show, it's Mark Hamill who plays. Yeah, it's, it's Mark Hamill. Who, who's you know. very, very famous for his voice acting work, specifically doing villains. Very famously has done the Joker a bunch of times. Yes. Um, Excellent so, voice actor. Yeah, and he puts the menace into this. This this guy does not. He has zero menace. He, he looks, looks and acts like a petulant high school science teacher. He, that's, wow, that's perfect. He looks like a high school science teacher, yes. Yeah, he's like the jerk teacher who makes fun of you for not being able to light your fucking Bunsen burner or whatever. Like, <laughs> he looks like a dick, but, like... <laughs> it's not like in the show he's this grand menacing figure, but they do a great job of building him up over yep. the course of three seasons to be like, okay, that guy's scary. Does not happen here. No, he's uh, just a round faced dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> also, Commander Zhao um, is played by who's um, he's kind of the main antagonist of the first movie. Zuko's always kind of weird because he's he's kind of the main antagonist throughout the show, but he's he, yeah he's complicated. It's it's a little weird with him. Yeah. Um, and Lord Ozai is the the sort of overarching villain, and then later on the show you get Princess Azula. But in the, the first movie, the real big bad is Commander Zhao, who's trying to kill all the water people up north. He's trying to get Aang. He's also trying to kill uh, Zuko, too. So he's just the yes. enemy of everybody. Yeah. He's played by Asif Manvi. I don't know who that is. He was a correspondent on The Daily Show. Oh, so odd all, choice. All I can picture, because he's Indian, and all the Fire <laughs> Nation people have to be Indian, and there's like eight Indians. That's also an odd choice. <laughs> But all I, when I see his face, all I can see is him in a suit, like cracking jokes about <laughs> politics. And it, 
and he's he's a decent actor, and he's kind of like uh, Def Patel with Zuko. He he acts well, but he doesn't have the menace. And in the show, Commander Zhao, I believe, is Jason Isaacs, um, who does uh, Lucius Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies, and is just oh, known really? for generally being a very good villain and also mm-hmm. doing voice acting work. And Zhao is very menacing and good in the show, and Monvi just doesn't have the chops for it. Mm. And yeah, the he, show's voice acting's pretty good. Yeah, and yeah, some of Mon it really just, hits. Some of it's middle of the road. They n- no one's ever menacing, and sort of the same with Dev Patel. Like he's acting well, but he just never gets that level of menace across that mm-hmm. all the Fire Nation people need in the, to make the story work. They're, like the yeah, the Fire Nation's whole bit was like they were all very like cruel and cold. And that feels like it's easy to pull off on a cartoon voice actor and not for an actor to act, a, a group of yeah. actors to properly pull off. Yes, very much so. Um, uh. So yeah, there are the our trio of heroes is in the northern water city. Sokka and the water princess, uh, who's uh, the hot blonde chick. Um, super white also. They, um, <laughs> <laughs> they walk around on a, a little date. And the romantic tension acting here is so stilted and ridiculous. It's like you, Sokka's the worst actor, the guy who plays Sokka. Uh, like, no one's good in this movie, but he's just <laughs> a train wreck. Oh, God. It's so bad. And, and he's again, like the biggest actor in the show. Like, he's the one, he's like the most animated. I, joking aside, he's like the most v- vibrant and animated character in the show. With, like, the biggest emotional swings, basically. Yeah, and mostly comic relief, but, like, has his moments where he can be serious and take charge. Yeah. But, yeah, Sokka is just flat in the movie the entire way through. (laughs) He never really takes charge. He's never once funny. It's like watching a tree branch act. (laughs) Yeah. It's just all the life is sucked out of the characters in, Uh. in every way, shape, and form. Um. So, and again, with the fucking Sokka and the princess going around on their little date, Shamalama Ding Dong, you fucking cropped in so tight on their faces, I can count Sokka's <laughs> nose hairs. Cut that shit out, you witless twat. Fucking goddammit. <laughs> that's really annoying. I'm going to so, have to look up some of those scenes because that sounds so awful. I want to see it. It's frustrating. So, yeah, Zhao blows up Zuko or some shit. I'm getting really tired of this now. Um, and he makes it look like an accident. Iroh is sad, but he joins Zhao on the boat ride up to melt the northern wet people. But, eh, turns out Zuko's not dead. He's just a stowaway on the boat, and the Iroh and him are, like, working people. together. <laughs> I only have so much energy, Larry. I can't. Yeah, you're can't really this movie. <laughs> but, yeah, and again, it's, like... I think in the show it's a whole episode where you or most of the episode a long time you think oh shit Zuko's dead like he just yeah. got blown up there's no way there's no way he's dead is he dead he can't actually mm-hmm. be dead and you spend a lot of time chewing over that and not in the movie it's all just quick <laughs> and then, again it's I don't necessarily blame Shyamalan for that too much because it's putting yeah, that's six a hours product of content of, in right. less than two hours it's that's just right. gonna happen but again, you still it's almost get... like you shouldn't have done this in the first place <laughs> so. Katara and Aang are training to be waterbenders, and so much of their training involves long scenes of maudlin music with them doing, like, basic Tai Chi-style bending martial arts moves, Uh but they're not bending anything. There's not water or ice, and they're training waterbending. That's the whole point. Yeah, and they're doing the moves, but there's not, like, water swirling around them. They're not manipulating water. They're just doing Tai Chi. Your one selling point of this being a live action movie <laughs> is to use cool CGI to do shit like that. Nope. <sighs> nope. That doesn't. Uh, that's. <laughs> Any so, idiot can do Tai Chi. Uh, I didn't get too much into a lot of the dialogue and specifics because it's just generally bad and. Um, most of it just serves to push the story along, and there's not a lot of characterization or subtlety or interesting dialogue for interesting dialogue's sake. But this particular one was so bad. So Fire Nation is, is coming down on the northern water, northern water city. I cannot talk. <laughs> northern water city. <laughs> you sound like the Swedish chef from the Muppets. Northern water city. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's where Norwegian people go when they die. 
Aang realizes, fuck, I should probably talk to that weird spiritual fucking dragon who I kind of said hi <laughs> oh, to, but didn't really Eddie talk Murphy. to. Yeah. <laughs> and he says it, to Princess Girl, is there a spiritual place I can meditate? And she says, there is a very spiritual place. The city was built around this place. <laughs> Ew. It's so... You don't want to take another pass at that one? It's so stilted, and three sentences in a row, in a row say place. Like, what <sighs> What are you doing? It just sounds off. Just so... Yeah. Mm, mm. So Aang goes down to the spiritual place, uh, which is a fancy koi pond with a tree and a cave or whatever, and he's going to meditate his way into the spirit dragon's lair. Turns out Zuko has snuck into the city, and he shows up while Aang is in, like, a trance, and he and Katara have an epic showdown. Except... The epic showdown lasts like 15 seconds and Zuko just wins. And there's like, they each, there's like two bending moves and then Zuko knocks her out with a fireball and just scoops up Aang and leaves. And Aang's still in great. a trance. <laughs> great. That's great. Good use of time. Yep. So Spooky Spirit tells Aang that, um, hey, buddy, you got to stop being such a little bitch and grieving over the fact that everyone you've ever known is dead and you have to go use the ocean. Okay. And that, that's spiritual dragon. Eddie Murphy's <laughs> done his thing. Aang's good to go. He can <laughs> save the day now. <laughs> God's sake. So Zuko and Aang have a kung fu fight where there's virtually no bending. Like Aang runs around a little bit with his wind power. And I think Zuko does a fire thing once. Yeah. But they're just doing martial arts moves for no, like two I minutes. I mean, it's an adaptation, so it doesn't have to be exactly the same. But I don't think Aang ever like throws a punch in the show. He, he, he usually like, like air bends people or dodges. Like he'll yeah, flip out of the way a bunch. Stuff. And that's it, he generally is a little more evasive in the martial arts stuff, but <sighs> and they do martial arts in the show, and it's like Zuko's shown training with swords and stuff like that. But yeah, they Again, know, they don't any fight scene. There's no more than five seconds without someone bending something, even it, though they're right. throwing punches and using swords too. That's your whole reason for doing this. Yes. It's Prana property. Yeah, it's popular, but if you're going to make it live action, do a bunch of cool CGI so at least you got some. Drag it from a two to a three. Bend the goddamn elements, Shyamalan <laughs> fucking twat. <laughs> That's the whole reason we're here. <laughs> Look, like, I hate Rogue One, okay? I know I'm very much in the minority here, but that movie ends with, like, a 25-minute Stormtrooper fight, which is, like... That brings that movie from a two to a five for me because you put stormtroopers shooting at stuff. I'm I'm in. You have right, fucking yeah. air bending and fire bending fights. I'm there for it. You can it's win cool. a lot back with good action. Yeah, you, you can you can have a movie that's not acted well. Their story is not great. If you put enough good action in it, it's okay. Yeah, and that's that, kind of how um, what the fuck was it? The stupid riot, the uh, six underground. <laughs> Like, right, that, you, that was, you complimented some of the action scenes. That was bad in a lot of ways, but it was <laughs> fun at times. Right, right. And uh, I forget what I rated it, but I'm sure it was higher than this. Mm. Um, so, ugh. Yeah, I, I just watched a show, called, it's on Netflix, it's called Cobra Kai. Uh, good show, um, the fight scenes are very good, but like, it's very cheesy, but it's kind of intentionally cheesy, so to look past it, but like, the very... Like in the in the the last episode of season two, there's like a twenty minute fight scene, which has become my favorite fight scene in any movie or TV show ever. It's oh. so good. It's interesting. It's perfect. It is the huh. per. It's just basically two karate schools fighting in a school for twenty minutes, and it is the perfect fight scene. And every problem I have with that season just melted away because this fight scene is the coolest thing in the world. That's all you got to yeah. do. Yeah, and I think that's part of the reason the first Pirates of the Caribbean comes across so good. Yeah. Is that there's so many great fight scenes, and there's a lot of other stuff that works. I think that's a pretty good movie overall. But yeah. just, ha like, will, um, fucking Johnny Depp and what's-his-face, Elfman. Legolas. Uh, Legolas. Will Sasso. No, nope, that's this? not right. Not will Sasso. <laughs> Sean Connery. Orla oh. Orlando. Oh man, he died today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Orlando Bloom, right? Yeah. Orlando Bloom. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah, you their, can really their fight like. Scene is a fifteen-minute just joyride. 
right and that delightful and and i think it's even better example is the other movies in that franchise that are way worse than the first one but the fight like i remember when i did the fifth one whatever the fuck dead men suck no no cocks yeah yeah yeah. the the fight scenes were oftentimes pretty good like you know that can really help that can be redeeming that'll pull you back into a movie that otherwise you've got a property that's all about throwing rocks and fireballs (laughs) at each other just do that yep (laughs) God's I, sake. I think I know why, and I think it might not be Shyamalan's fault, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Interesting. Okay. I'm still going to um, blame him, but I'll take your word for it. He deserves a lot of blame, but I think he gets more blame than he deserves. You're going to end this review by telling us how much of a fan of Shyamalan you are, aren't you? No. No, not really. <laughs> no. Uh, we'll see. I do like The Sixth Sense. Signs had its moments. Yeah, uh, rewatch it and tell me if that's still the case. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix is good. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. All right. So, yeah, they're they're having their fight that's not very bendy, and then Katara shows up and locks Zuko in some ice, and they flee. So Zhao reveals to Iroh that he plans to kill the spirit fish, and Iroh is sad. <laughs> Zhao grabs the fishy and stabs the fishy, while Iroh's standing there like, no, don't, please, no, that's bad. <laughs> but then as soon as he stabs the fishy, Iroh gets all fire spooky and makes Zhao and his goons leave. Okay. It's weird. And it's like, like, Iroh just doesn't seem to really care that much. He's just underacting it until the fish gets stabbed. He's like, <laughs> no, pro- like, the spirits are important. We probably should not kill the spirits. <laughs> It will make unbalance happen in the world. And as soon as the fish gets stabbed, he's like fire shoots out of his fucking eyeballs and he freaks out. Maybe you wanna weird. maybe you wanna start with that. Yeah, yeah. Just equalize the tension a little bit. Yeah. God Ugh, God um so Sokka Katara and the princess have all showed up like while this is going on, and the princess faints princess faints while the fish gets stabbed. Uh Princess wakes up and Iroh tells her that uh, hey, sorry, uh, little girl, you gotta go sacrifice yourself uh, and your soul to save the spirit of the fish. And Sokka's like, no, wait, I haven't gotten a smash yet, don't kill yourself. <laughs> they argue, and she kisses him, and she jumps in the pond and dies for the spirit fish, and the moon turns back on. Yeah, it turns the moon off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the fish, was that fish was the moon, by the way. Yeah, it's Just like the, that out there. The, the ocean and the moon spirit, I think, and he stabs the moon spirit fish. But he... <laughs> I, I don't know, anyway, I can't it's, get into it's, spirituality. It's, cartoons are still a little dumb. Let's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's. I like the show, but when you when you fucking put it to real life, like that's that's pretty dumb. Right. Yeah. And we don't fish, we don't need the theology of the moon and ocean spirit to be like particularly coherent because I mean, fuck, the Eucharist isn't coherent. So no. whatever. No, God. The theology no. just never is coherent. No, religion is <laughs> idiotic and should be destroyed. That's so, not yeah. a joke. <laughs> I am in firm belief of that. Um, so some waterbenders put Zhao in a big ball of water and drown him to death. I think he's the only person who, like, dies on screen. There's a lot of fighting and sword fighting, and you kind of assume people die. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure this is rated PG. Yeah, not a lot of people check, but... really die in the show, either. Yeah, yeah, Which, again, true. for me, is one of the reasons why I was like, okay, well, I mean, you know. They defeat a lot of villains by throwing them into the water and then, like, walking away. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> Which is anyway. always like, you know, they're going to, like, they can probably swim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we see a lot of slow motion, water bending, air bending, whatever, ang on the battlefield. Uh, Again, it's, like, it's fine CGI, but it's just not, it's not, it's underwhelming. It doesn't feel as powerful as it should. Right. Um, or as powerful as it comes across in the cartoon. And part of that is just live action having its limitations but i feel like they could have done better well look at it like let's i know the the sure the budgets probably aren't comparable but look at like a marvel movie at you know some of the shit and crazy fight scenes they have in that and some of the crazy cgi they can do just with lasers for christ's sake i mean yeah it's the budget for this wasn't nothing it's 150 million 10 years ago yeah and it's not like they're paying a johnny depp four million of that right yeah yeah, yeah, there's not many big big actors names and right. yeah, even Dev Patel, who's kind of a big name, when they were filming this, uh, Slumdog Millionaire had already been filmed, but it hadn't been released yet, I believe, mm-hmm. or hadn't won the Oscars. Right. So he wasn't even. He's not name. commanding a huge salary. No, definitely not. Hmm. So 
Aang goes into the Avatar state and makes a giant wave that is so big and scary and threatening that the Fire Nation just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, in the show, like, he has, like, he's this big, he, I forget exactly how it happens, but he's a giant towering figure. He, like, makes a big that, water monster and makes big water punches. Right, yeah. This is literally just a big wall of water that, you know, it's it's huge. It towers over the ships, but it seems a little strange that everyone just, <laughs> the f- whole Fire Nation would be like, oh, let's go. Never mind. Nope. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although, to be fair, they're going back to Lord Ozai, who's fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Dumpy McDump face. Yeah. Looks like he repairs vending machines. <laughs> He's an importer exporter. <laughs> um, yeah, so the We're movie terrible ends. Uh, every like, the, <laughs> Aang is Juan. Everyone bows down to him. It's kind of a cathartic moment because the reason he fled his previous life was because he was scared about being the Avatar and people bowing to him. So he kind of has that moment where he's like, "Okay, fine, I'm the Avatar." Rah. Uh, and then the very end of the movie is on Azula, who's Zuko's sister. Ozai's other child, and who's ultimately the main villain of the TV series. Like, Ozai kind of is, but Azula's really... She's definitely the, the main in- villain of season two, for sure. She's the most insidious, like, conniving, like, always just fucking everyone's day up. Yeah. Um. So, and which must have been awful, because this poor girl was cast, and this was supposed to be a trilogy. <laughs> there were supposed to be three movies, and she would have been... Kind of the star of movie yeah. two, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure she was like, "Oh yeah, this is great. They're they're only paying me like a thousand dollars to come in and do this one scene, but the next movie I'm gonna make a bunch of money. It's gonna launch my career." And then Shyamalan fucked it up so bad that she's <laughs> fucking fixing vending machines with her fucking goofy ass father now. <laughs> oh, and also, yeah, no, she is Asian. Wait, what? she's not Indian. Hold I didn't even think of that. That doesn't make any sense because. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. What? Wait. Damn it. That didn't compute. (laughs) Until now. What? Fucking hell. Shyamalan. What are you doing? Jesus Christ. Good Lord. So, that's it. That's the movie. So, why is it so bad? (laughs) Well. Uh, There's a couple reasons. Uh, One is there's absolutely no fun. Mm -hmm. In the movie, at all. No humor. In the show, Sokka, Aang, Katara, Momo, Appa, Iroh are all funny. They all have moments of humor and goofiness and whimsy. Even fucking Zuko has moments of comic relief. There's not a single laugh in the movie. There's not even a moment where I can tell they were going for a laugh and it just falls flat. They just do not try. It's That's so central to the show. It's like... That and the serious action parts are like they get equal relevance and equal uh, yes. reverence are given to both. Basically, Sokka's almost most of Sokka's character is being a kind of whiny, goofy, complainy guy, right? Which makes the parts where he's like the smart, where he comes up with the plans, or he has a moment of like where he saves the day, mean something because it's like, oh hey, the comedy relief character isn't just here for the shitty kid joke. Yeah, and Aang has this sense of childlike whimsy and yeah, goofiness. He's, which he's 12! Is, yeah, and, and it really plays off the Asian culture and, like, the Zen master and, the like, the silly monk just being a goofball for right. being a goofball's sake. Right. That is, uh, that's very accurate to that kind of person in Asian culture, mm-hmm. uh, specifically with Zen Buddhism in mind, but yeah, generally monks and um, that kind of thing. And yeah, it's just none of that. And so, I mean, obviously humor is a big part that's lost here, but there's other important characterizations from the show that don't show up in the movie. Like, Katara does not ever have a temper tantrum, and that's a big thing for her. Yeah. Where she, uh, the several times in the first season, like, she flies off the handle, and shit gets messed up because of her temper, and then she has to, like, come back to reality and, like, apologize and realize why she was wrong, and yeah. it's pretty... Cool, it's good characterization. She's the Monica of the group, for those of you who know <laughs> Friends jokes. <laughs> she really is. Uh, also, Aang's self-doubt is basically non-existent, and that's a big part of the show. That's, yeah, that's like his whole driving characteristic, is that he's the Avatar who's supposed to save the world, which is a lot of responsibility on a 12-year-old boy who doesn't even know how his deck works. 
<laughs> which is also a characteristic oh. that comes up. He knows how his dick works. He's going to throw Katara a bone. I know it. Mm, we'll see. Or, well, no, 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 no. I did figure it out because he has to let... Because, again, I'm only at the beginning of season three. He has to learn how to let Katara go, and he's going to learn to do that because Zuko's going to end up fucking Katara. That's my guess. At any rate. <laughs> so... Oh, and <laughs> Fuck's sake. Perhaps an argument, and I don't want to do this, but an argument in defense of Mr. Shamalama Ding Dong... Interesting. Is the fact that the studio decided mere weeks before their premiere to turn this into a 3D movie. Oh, no. Yeah, and this was the height oh, of 3D. And, God. Like, 3D was getting started, and the movie Avatar, James Cameron movie, came out in 2009, uh. which really turned, like, 3D over the top, and, the, like, everything has to be 3D. And this was the era, like, the early 2010s. Everything was fucking 3D. And it was the worst. Yeah. It was never good. Even the Avatar, which... Or just Avatar, set out <laughs> yeah, to I do know. it well you and did it Try as... to talk about both those movies at the same time is a terrible yeah. idea, you understand? It's hard. <laughs> James Cameron's Avatar was... Yeah, yes. The... James Cameron's Avatar did it well, but I still mm. would just rather watch it in 2D. Yeah. Like, it was kind of cool, but I kind of... It's kind of pain. I've... I don't want to wear the fucking glasses. It doesn't look that great. <laughs> I've seen like, enough of both to know that there's never been a movie experience that I've had made better by it being 3D. Yeah. But they decided to make it 3D at the last minute. And they spent $10 million and did it in a matter of weeks. And yeah. they ended up cutting out 30 minutes of screen time. Mm -hmm. It's relatively which, short for how big of a budget movie it is. Yeah, it's uh, 100 minutes, basically. Yeah. So, and usually this kind of movie is going to be a little bit over two hours. And that, that's exactly what it would have been. It would have right. been a little over two hours with that extra 30 minutes in. Kind of helped. And, and this is where I don't know how forgiving to be to Shyamalan. Shyamalan, whatever. Um, Mr. Knight. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know what exactly was cut. And there might, like a lot of the reasons the pacing isn't so great is probably because they cut a lot of stuff out. And maybe he did film some comic relief stuff with Sokka uh, or a temper tantrum with Katara that would be like an appropriate characterization based on the show. But since that's not driving the story and that's not the big budget action that's going to look good in 3D, they didn't want to bother with it. And that's easy to cut out. I, 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 in, in attack of, Shum, of Mr. Knight, <laughs> I'm going to say <laughs> I feel like even if you did that, it should be reflected in the rest of the characters – and not just yeah. in a self-contained scene of like, oh, here's Sokka yes. falling on his butt, <laughs> his butt, or you know, whatever. <laughs> I feel like, like it, yeah. With with the stuff that got cut out because of the whole 3D thing, like if I'm being generous, that maybe could have moved the movie up from a two to a three, mm -hmm. <laughs> if if it was as good as it could have been. And yeah, I, if I don't it was the if it was that. the if those 30 minutes were the best 30 minutes of the two hour potential yes. movie. Yeah, it, it would, would still, still only not be, a, be three. a good movie. <laughs> it would still have a lot of problems. Uh, but yeah, some of it's not Shyamalan's fault. But that's he fair. Definitely, he I mean, deserves that, that, the lion's share. That 3D craze really did just to fucking uh, it ruined yeah. so much. It was movies at that not time. a good time. No, it was never necessary, and it was only fucking James Cameron's stupid Avatar, which everybody likes but me, that really I, ruined. I'm it. I'm middling on it. It, it, it's a, it's an exciting movie. The, it's the, fun to watch. I have not gone back and watched it again. The beginning of this year was the one of the last times I saw my sort of extended step family. Um, they got into a lively discussion about how much they all liked Avatar, and I sat there flabbergasted, like, <laughs> "Fucking everybody likes Pocahontas in space. What are you talking about? That movie was yeah. like a four out of ten at best. It looked great, and right, that's three yeah. out of the four. It's, it's it like, looks awesome. I've, I've gone mean, out of my way in the last year to watch Die Hard. I've gone out of my way to watch Titanic again. You have seen those movies multiple times. Is Die but, Hard like, James Cameron? Or, no, no, no. No, just okay. I, I just, thought you, maybe okay. Just thinking of movies um, that um, I, I like so much that I have gone out of my way to watch multiple times, sure, and will yeah. want to watch again. Right. And Avatar is definitely not one of them. No, I don't have any desire to watch it again. If I'm in a situation where like. Hey, I've, it's a movie night and people want to watch Avatar. I'd, I'd be fine with it, but I should watch I don't know it again if I will to ever see if I choose to watch Avatar. Yeah, I should watch it again to see if my views have changed. 
but I saw it in theaters and was thoroughly unimpressed. So, but yeah, that's that's basically it. Again, my score for this is two out of ten. It's it's I don't think it's the worst movie I've had to review. It's you know the there's enough that's like there. Like I I could see a, a ten year old who's not eyeing anything critically and just wants some action scenes and wants the story and it's fine for them. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. It sounds <laughs> like you took all the heart out of the show, which is the thing that really like bound yes. it all together. And, and that's why I think people are so. Like, if this movie existed unto itself without the show, right. I think people would be a lot less animated about how uh, their hatred for it. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, think it would, I think it would just be forgotten. But this, it's like such a yes. perversion of such a loved it's a, property. A, yeah, a punch in the gut if yeah. you love Avatar, the, the cartoon. Right. Um, but yeah, it's definitely bad. <laughs> there's like, like Ebert said, there's nothing that really works. No, it doesn't sound no, like nothing. It. They don't get anything right, really. Maybe the set design is the closest thing, and even then, it's like adequate. Mm. And speaking <laughs> and of that, fucking Shyamalan doesn't show it because he wants to zoom in on everyone's fucking nose. Yeah, speaking of that, we looked into the the local pagoda in our area is not in the movie. It only made it onto foreign movie posters. Oh right, yeah. It's like the the Taiwanese uh. poster or Korea, one of the one of the posters is somewhere in the Asian countries. It was like they use the pagoda that's like near to my home on the poster. That's it. Unfortunately, yeah, that was Redding's closest uh, claim to fame since um, the the cow that died to be the side of beef that Rocky beats up in the meat locker. <laughs> that that came from Berks County. Great. But other than that, yeah, we don't have a whole lot of cinema history. Nothing of value has come from this county. <laughs> no. Were you born in Berks County? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't. So, and I still live. But here. I, I I was born in the eighties. And nothing good comes out of the eighties. So True. I'm so still... it's both like both of our lives are completely meaningless. Yeah. Oh fuck! I forgot yeah. to take my anxiety medicine this morning. <laughs> Not a joke. <laughs> Just remembered. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, <laughs> let's let's get into what we're covering over the next couple of weeks. Uh, so next week, Larry, you're gonna have an interesting little feature film. It's got some big names in it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not gonna give them all away now. You, you mentioned um, this a little to... bit before we started, and that you were you've had this on your radar for quite a while. Yeah, I um, fucking Netflix. I swear to God, <laughs> Jesus, it starts playing as soon as you open it. All right, <laughs> an old man yelling at the computer. Jesus. So I've I've this. I think this came out in '99 or something like that. So, and I remember when it came out. I remember thinking it was weird, it looking bad, but being like vaguely curious about it. Oh but, wait, hold on. And it's. It's been on my radar of movies that are like, what the fuck is this movie? Oh, wait a minute. The, the details are coming together here. Is this not it another is... teen movie? No. Okay. No, Thank God, because I actually like that movie. <laughs> Thank God. Because <laughs> I think that is... was also 99, and it has a lot of stars in it. This is the movie Anaconda. Oh, no. Oh, God. This is legendarily <laughs> terrible. Yes. Ah, Lord. It's supposed to be very bad, and it's got a lot of people in it. Also, this is one of those horror movies that they made 15,000. Is that Anthony Hopkins? No, John Voight. Oh, John Voight. Okay. Uh, A documentary film crew on a boat in the Amazon picks up a mysterious stranger who dupes them into pursuing a monstrous and deadly 40 foot long snake. Great. Starring yep. Jennifer Lopez, Ice Cube. Ice Cube? What yep. is Ice Cube doing here? <laughs> and John Fight. <laughs> and it's such this movie, a bizarre cast. This movie is campy, is one of the things. Eric Stoltz yeah. from Mask? Owen Wilson? Danny Trejo oh, Wilson? again? <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, hey, look at that. Frank Welker. That name also sounds familiar. This will um, be interesting, I'm sure. Y- yeah, this... And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this, this is movie... exactly the kind of movie I want to give to you because I want to know about this movie, <laughs> but I don't want to watch it. Well, that's what I felt about Avatar or The Last Airbender. <laughs> this movie eh, spawned, well. I think there's like 45 Anaconda sequels, if I'm not mistaken. Because I think this Jesus. had mild success for being ridiculous and having a million actors and actresses in it and also Ice Cube. Who, yeah. I, I it was, it's counts... definitely in the cultural milieu to a certain extent. Yeah. This movie. Oh, God's sake. This yeah, I've known about this for many years, but can't say I've ever seen it or wanted to see it. Also, I looked it up without starting the movie because I'm not an idiot. Oh, how do you do that? This week, you just click the arrow. Well, um, 
Let's see if I can manage it. What am, what am I doing two weeks from now? In in much the opposite faction, this is a movie you've never seen, heard of, or will hear of again. But um, I, I've I've been wanting to return to this. Let's call it a theme for a while. Is it now. Nazi related? No, no, no. Okay. Um, the, I it, believe me. Every two weeks, I check to see if there's any new Nazi movies on Netflix for you to watch. So, but there hasn't been. Um, it looks like some of these movies of this ilk seem to be disappearing off of Netflix. So now is the time, Isaac. I'm gonna have you look up a movie called mm. Sniper Special Ops and tell me who the star is. Uh, is this The Rock? <laughs> oh, you wish, dear. You wish, my dear. Don't- oh no! Fuck! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> it's your Damn. turn, Isaac. Oh, it's finally your turn. <laughs> Steven Seagal. No. <laughs> He's been I, off of this show for a long time. Uh, I just saw, because Steven Seagal famously badly hosted Saturday Night Live oh, they're in the early 90s. Terrible. Yeah, I just watched the sketch with him, with Chris Farley, and Chris Farley's like picking up his daughter. It's the worst. It is the most awkward, unfunny thing I've ever seen, and Chris Farley is like, my favorite SNL personality ever. It just ends and nobody knows when to start clapping because he has it's no so fucking weird. sense of comedy. He's yeah, he's such a self-absorbed fucking prat. I want to yeah. smack him in the dick. He is quite possibly one of the worst people in Hollywood. I'm. We've probably told the story of him shitting his pants while he got choked out because he said he couldn't get choked out. But we're gonna tell that story in a lot of detail again in two weeks. Oh, uh, we're definitely anyway. gonna be talking more about Steven Seagal because shit has happened. Since the last time we've had him on this show. <laughs> oh, God. Did he have a sex thing? Yeah, he did. I don't remember if that oh. happened on the podcast when we were doing the podcast before, but he had a sex thing. Great. Yeah, that makes sense. That computes. That. God damn it. Uh, most of his movies Clown. seem to be gone, which is why I wanted to get one in in case this one goes, too. Mm, yeah. But oh, this movie. face is so. All right. Follow up so, reason. Uh, go ahead and read the blurb, and I'll give you the follow up reason why you're getting this movie. <laughs> Sniper Special Ops, after a mission to rescue a U.S. congressman from the Taliban ends, with two men left behind, their sniper buddies go against orders to get them back. Do you, do you happen to see who the second person in the cast is? Rob Van Dam? Rob Van Dam, oh, are you familiar? Wait, that's the wrestler, isn't it? <laughs> sure is! Oh no. Rob Van Dam oh, is no. one of my least favorite wrestlers. <laughs> Didn't he come back at the one we went to live? Yes, Wasn't he that did. Big return. That's right. You were oh, there. I forgot you were there shit. with me at that one. Yeah, Rob Van Dam. Oh. He's a wrestler. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about him more in two weeks. I'm sure. I mean, I fully oh. intend to. His whole character is I get high, man, because that's all his life has ever been is smoking oh, weed. Oh my god, Larry! <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I, it's my it. least favorite actor and my least favorite wrestler. I had to give this to you before you gave it to me. <laughs> oh, I I thought I had you with Anaconda, but God damn it. God damn it. I have Ew. had, Seagal has been like lurking in the back of my brain for a while now. And it's like, I got to get Isaac to watch a Seagal. And also he I want to get so away from. He's so thick. He, His head is so thick. He's got a head like a manhole cover. <laughs> He also, he got really fat. So He yeah. used to be, for those of you who don't know, he used to be like a, a relatively semi-famous martial artist of fakey he fake Akido, which is not a real martial art. But um, he uh, got really fat. So to counter that, he just started wearing moomoos. <laughs> he's got some weird shit. Russia too, right? Where he's like, yeah, he's a Russian North citizen. Korea. Yep. Fucking he goes and God, visits dictators. Clown. He is a clown. <laughs> Jesus. Fucking we'll be talking Seagal. we'll be talking a lot about him. He is the worst. And also I'm really excited to get to give you a movie that like we have no connection to besides it being Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. Mm. We might this might be a uh, or bonus adventure in the colon, a deep dive into Steven Seagal. I would that, that- <laughs> I would absolutely love to do that because he is a oh. head scratcher clown is like the best way it's not yeah. the most insulting thing but it describes him the best he is a clown yeah he's how how anyone especially himself could take him seriously escapes me oh and he takes himself deadly seriously yes in yes. his mind he is the world's deadliest man <laughs> and he is a genius 
and everything. Like, it, he is something else. Yeah, we're we're doing a, a bonus adventure in the colon. I definitely deep dive I'm, once I'm, the goal. I'm, yeah, I'm so that in. It's gotta have. There's too many stories. Because him, remember... him is Russia shit. His whatever a sex offender bullshit is. I don't. We even know we about talked that. about him a little bit, not too much in Code of Honor, which I think is like episode six. Yeah, that's way early in our or episode our five or seven because I do odd numbers. It's episode five or seven. Um, yeah, it was very early on, and we went into him a little bit. But first of all, in in the, in the words of the Big Lebowski, new shit has come to light, and yeah. also I've just learned more about him, and he is a fucking lunatic. If anyone deserves a deep dive, like I felt bad talking about Shyamalan as much as we did, and there was definitely more I could have talked about, but Seagal deserves an hour of content. 100%. About him as a person. <laughs> so yeah, look for that coming up. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I think I think just now the reviews could prove us wrong, but I think I got you this time for sure. I am 99% sure. That but you, uh, yeah, why you is have Ice Cube in the Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> I can't get over the fact that Ice Cube is an anaconda. At least J Lo's hot. Yeah, I mean, there's that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, John Voight's attractive. I don't really know him. He's in Deliverance, isn't he? Uh, is he? I don't really know. Like, I, I, I I'm familiar is. with the name vaguely, but I don't really know his work. He's Angelina Jolie's dad. In real life, or but in the show? In real life, in the movie. No, in real oh. life. Uh, and like, uh, but he's he's a fairly famous actor. I think oh, in Deliverance. 70s and 80s. Okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure he's in Deliverance. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah he was de- big in the 70s and 80s, and has like popped up in random shit like this. Like he's a name. He's also. <laughs> uh, do you remember the Seinfeld episode where George buys John Voight's car? No. I really oh, don't. you don't? You should watch that. Do you have Hulu? I could get it very easily. Yeah, it's a good episode, and okay. John Voight cameos in it. I, and- I don't remember that one at all. He has a very interesting interaction with Kramer. It's one of the more bizarre what the fuck is Seinfeld doing <laughs> All right. moments. Yeah. It's I'll a good episode that. to watch. <laughs> well, there's no bad episodes of Seinfeld. No. But uh, and John Voight's actually in it, too. Like right. It's not just like Steinbrenner where it's Larry David from behind or something. Like It's actually John Voight in the, in the show. Too. It's great. <laughs> All right. Well, fuck. Okay. We're rambling enough. Oh, uh, Lord. <laughs> We are the Bowser Netflix. Thank you so much for listening. I don't know why you do, but God bless you. I we had a record a record month in October. The final numbers aren't in yet as of recording this, but mm-hmm. best month we've had, and let's let's keep it going. Let's have November be a new record. Yes, and th- if you're listening to this, thank you so much. We 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 truly appreciate you. I know I yell at you a lot and tell you all to fuck off, but no, I truly deeply appreciate you for listening yeah. to us ramble about movies and each other and oftentimes nothing like Seinfeld episodes which have nothing to do with anything <laughs> we, we really um, truly appreciate the time you spend with us yeah it's it's really cool to have um, anyone listen to this besides you me and my uh, restrained wife while I you know play it on repeat um, yeah. over and over again it pretty so much she don't... thinks I'm in the room while she's blindfolded <laughs> That's what you do for like the dog. I do that for the dog too. I just play my own voice so he thinks that I'm still here. I wish I was kidding. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, like nobody in my life really listens to this except sometimes my mom. <laughs> but I don't think she will anymore. I think that's a scent of mother. Thanks, thanks, <laughs> me. Can't thanks forget for that. that. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I, How I does won't. she smell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't know. God damn it. <laughs> Were you cesarean or birth canal? I don't know, actually. No, I was birth canal, I think. All right. Well, this has been great. (laughs) This is great. This is awesome. Make sure to uh, rate and subscribe. Give us five stars or ten jiggles or however it works on the platform you're listening to. Uh, Write a review. If you write a review and it's, like, quirky and funny and you give us cool accolades, maybe we'll read it on air or something like that. Yeah, hell yeah. Absolutely. Uh, make sure to email us, bowsandnetflix at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you about anything, honestly. Uh, titty pics are appreciated, uh, male or female. Mm-hmm. Dick pics are appreciated, male or female. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. Genitals, we like them. Send us a picture of anything, literally anything. No. Not of Steven no. Seagal. Yeah, well. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, Bowls and Netflix. We're the only one. You can search us and find us. Uh, TikTok, uh, again, a lot of like just the 
a taint ravaged by time pictures and videos is basically. <laughs> but we're just a catering taint to ravaged by time will be your biopic name. Yeah. We're just catering to Kansas on that one because that's where you get the most listens. And it's true. For whatever reason, they're taint hungry down there. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, for long quarantine. <laughs> you taint hungry? <laughs> Uh, no, no, oh. no, no, no. A taint, a taint, like, who would ever be taint hungry? Like, a taint is something you pass by on the way to your five course meal. It's true. It's the, it's the foyer of you know it's the, the restaurant. Foyer. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> this is just horrible. Send us some taint pics. We love you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Smell a shamalama shingalaga digga ding dong shamalama ding dong you later. <laughs>